Morning guys, it's Jan from Not A Real Farm. So this morning I'm looking around and we're kind of at that point now where we're at the end of July and we have to start deciding, you know, what we're gonna be keeping, what I'm gonna be sort of taking out and, and utilizing, you know, the space for, and then of course cleaning up. But I wanted to take a moment to sort of reflect on the five things that I've learned since having this greenhouse um, and share them with you. Uh, just for future reference for yourselves in case you get into uh, greenhousing. Just wanted to share what I've learned. So one of the mistakes often that happens is that people forget to look at the relative humidity inside their greenhouse. Um, one of the things that people should be doing is making sure that they're looking at this on a daily basis. I normally have mine up here just so that I can come in that's not the real time, come in and sort of glance at what the, the relative humidity is compared to the temperature, uh, just because sometimes I have to get control of that. Otherwise, the diseases are gonna go crazy in here with mold spores and everything else. And you do get mold from time to time on plants, uh, and sometimes the humidity is to blame for that. Um, the other thing that you might wanna look at as well is taking certain plants that have the same uh, humidity needs and putting them together. So sometimes people will put sort of peppers and tomatoes and that kind of stuff in the same location, but you might wanna just do your research first before you put everything, sort of plop everything all in one area because sometimes some plants don't actually need the same humidity as others. So that's just a tip. The other thing that people need to look into is ventilation. And it doesn't matter if you've got um, sort of a greenhouse like I have in the back 40 or you've got a greenhouse like this one there needs to be some ventilation um, because if your greenhouse has no venting, then basically on sunny days and even your coldest days when it's sunny, the heat's always gonna rise to the top and it's gonna create humidity and you'll get drips and all kinds of craziness. So if you don't have ventilation in the summer, uh, what will happen is your plants will cook. They will just cook. You'll come in and you will find that your peppers or your tomatoes will start getting, they look like sun scorch on them so you have to make sure you have some ventilation uh, put in. And here, of course, <clears throat> let me move back. You know, I have three fans on the ceiling and in the wall so that we can just pop them on and away we go. So the other thing you have to look at too, uh, a lot of mistakes people make with greenhouses is you don't put up a shade cloth. Um, your plants are going to need shade. And even if you're one of those lucky people that get to grow through the winter, I envy you, um, you'll definitely still need something that will create some shade so your plants can get a break. Obviously, you, you, direct, you directly mount this uh, up higher to follow the path of the sun. So ours sort of follows this weird path where it kind of goes on this sort of trajectory. It doesn't actually go over the very, very top of the greenhouse. It actually kind of connects with the sunflower and goes straight across. So the shade cloth is hooked up to the top here to follow the sun on the hottest times of the day. So other people, when they set up greenhouses like this, sometimes have electric monitors or some sort of system to monitor it automatically where you know, you, they get the shades pulled down for them or their vents pop out for them. Uh, mine's, not that, <laughs> mine's not that complex. So this is going to be uh, sort of up here for the rest of the summer and then I'll adjust as I need to if I'm going to uh, grow any, you know, grow any sooner. Usually probably by November, the end of November, I take January and February off. So I'm not really too concerned about growing in the coldest months yet. So make sure to have your shade cloth, guys. And guys heating please don't use a regular heater in a greenhouse you'll catch it on fire or burn it out or it'll explode or something in your greenhouse they're not meant to take the humidity inside a greenhouse so if you are going to decide to use an electric heater or something in here in the winter time uh depending on where you are i can't do that it gets too cold uh you know in in january february so an electric heater is just a waste of time. But if you are one of the lucky ones that are able to use an electric heater, uh, please don't use a regular one because it'll it'll just burn out. It's not meant to. Uh, it's just not meant to be in the uh, the humidity. So use a proper greenhouse heater. Um, I've seen it and I cringe every time I see where people are putting sort of regular uh, home heating, uh, you know, electric heaters inside their greenhouse. Don't do it because uh, one day you're gonna come out and it might be on fire. <laughs> So please, use a greenhouse heater. <laughs> Another mistake to avoid uh, in a greenhouse is the soil that you're gonna use. So 
I'm taking back, of course, this is, it's a mess right now because I'm taking back some of my space and the, these uh, green bean plants are done, but the soil, guys. You can't use regular soil for a greenhouse because what will happen is the soil will become compacted when you water it. And when you try to, you know, tend to your plants, it'll almost be like cement on the top, much like we're seeing outside right now. So I have a five-way mix in here. It has compost in it as well, but it's light. It's lovely. It's crumbly. It's got a mixture of sand in it. You want to be able to have soil that's sort of light and fluffy so that the roots can expand and not become impacted by the by the water. Obviously, your, your plants just aren't going to get the best start if you're trying to use regular soil because it's too heavy and they just end up by dying. So basically, you have to sometimes, if you don't have the ability to get, you know, a three or five way mix, you can use potting soils, but they can't have any garden soil in them. So it's something where you kind of have to find a balance for yourself and see which works best for you. But, you know, try not to use regular soil inside the inside the greenhouse because it will dry out so fast and you'll be in here watering and your plants will just eventually die. And last but not least, the other thing is fertilizer. So I don't use the same fertilizer on everything. Um, in a greenhouse, maybe even in soil in general, depending on what you're growing, it's not a one size fits all. So I have certain fertilizers for my carrots. I have certain fertilizers that I use on my tomatoes and my peppers. And then I also have certain fertilizer that I'll be using on my uh, asparagus. So when you're putting in plants, it's not a one size fits all, right? So basically what you should be doing if you do set up a greenhouse, because I know a lot of people sort of just get in there and they throw everything in the ground and then there's going to be different, uh, you know, obviously fertilizer needs. So try to group the plants together based on their fertilizer needs, you know, uh, group things that, you know, will take the carrot fertilizer, group things together that would need the, you know, the marine soil enhancer, you know, glacial rock dust is a little bit special. Um, I use that on the asparagus. So try to find plants that need sort of the similar nutrient amounts and the similar fertilizers, because uh, you'll just save yourself some sanity if you do that. And last but not least, guys, one piece of advice that I can give you um, with a greenhouse is know how to walk away. There are times, like this week, yesterday even, for example, I'm fighting, I found three grasshoppers in here, so that's going to be something I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to monitor. Um, I found cabbage moths. I don't know if you guys are having problems with those, but cabbage moths seems to be out everywhere now. So cabbage moths, grasshoppers. Um, I've got ant issues up in the uh, blackberry and, and, and raspberry field. I've got <laughs> bean plants that all of a sudden, the temperatures have dropped at night now. They're, like I said, about uh, 13 degrees Celsius, so about 55 for my US people. My bean plants outside, all of a sudden the leaves are turning yellow. The wasps are chasing me around out of the garden and getting stuck in my hair. Um, I've got all these weird things happening too where the wasps are starting to come out of the ground. So when you walk over, you know, if you've got these little holes in the ground, they're starting to come out of the holes. And, you know, yesterday it was hot. It was high 90s. And um, I had to take my hose and it kept getting hooked on the ground on, you know, uh, some of the some of the stumps that were sort of hanging out of the ground. And I thought, OK, I came back in here and I saw all the cabbage moths and stuff like that. And I had to deal with it. And I was still in the middle of cleanup and I'm still cutting plants down and changing things. And you just have to know when to walk away. I had to walk away and just go in and get a coffee and take a breather. Um, it can become, you know, with this size of greenhouse and the one in the back uh, I have leaf hoppers that I have to get a control you know over to and it just seemed like it was one of those days where I was spinning my tires and not getting anything done so so the sixth thing that I can say about uh, of being in a greenhouse and having to operate it and walk away because uh, sometimes you just need a sanity break <laughs> Anyways, guys, it's uh, coming up for the long weekend here in Canada. So I just wanted to wish everybody in Canada that's watching happy long weekend. Uh, for my U.S. people, try and hang in there. I know that we're getting, uh, even me out on the plains, we are getting smashed with grasshoppers right now. Just keep going. That's for my North Dakota people. Um, keep going. 
keep just keep going. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks very much for joining me today. And those are pretty much some of the, you know, five, five things that I'd recommend if you're going to be getting into greenhousing. Thanks for watching Not A Real Farm. See you soon.